Hello everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue along with this typewriter tutorial. Uh, I'm looking at the bottom right. I'm noticing that it's probably been like two or three weeks since I've recorded a part of this. For you guys, you can't tell at all, but uh, man, it's good to be back. Been a little bit too busy. Holidays are coming up. Uh, contract work, real work, a lot of work. Um, life's crazy, man. Life's crazy. But you know what? Uh, let's continue along. This is <laughs> totally unrelated to what we're doing. Um, so I had to do a little bit of catching up. I had to see what we were working on exactly. Um, and I've deciphered that there are five pieces that we have to make before we can dive into the keys and uh, all the stuff that comes along with it on the inside. Those five things are 10 and 12, which I just cut from over here so 10 is this bar very quick and easy we're gonna do that right away 12 is this ruler piece once again uh, relatively quick and easy uh, nothing too complicated uh, we still have this piece here which is attached to this guy um, we have this back underwood plate which of course sticks out of the back here um, I can show it on any reference it's pretty consistent this guy here um, and then this guy on the front. So if we look at any of the front shots, we got this guy here, um, which is another pretty quick piece. So some of these are going to take longer than others. Uh, I should probably rearrange these. This guy we should probably do last because he relies on this guy being done. We'll do it in this order. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, we can delete them as we go. So are we going to get through all of these right now? Almost certainly not, um, but we can definitely uh, take a chunk out of it. So let's start off with number 10, which is this bar back here. Let's try and find a real life reference as that 3D model has proven to be a little less than accurate. Um, So that one would be this guy here. It's kind of cool that this clamp is there. I didn't really notice that before. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. And uh, what I'm going to do is paste it in here and just sort of overlap it. So I remember that uh, this guy here, this clamp on the back is actually wrapping around to the bar that we're making right now, um, which means those two pieces are going to be pretty tight. Um, and we're almost certainly going to have to shimmy some things around uh, once we get to that part. So let's let's keep an eye on this reference back here. Um, the positioning of this bar is more or less going to determine where we put this part. So we got to be somewhat careful. I think it'd be easiest to get the bar into position first and then work on the attachment. And I am quite fond that this attachment is going inside of this guy because I don't like how much space there is. I want to cover as much of that as possible. So if the camera pokes in there, it's not this awkward, weird looking, just hollow shell, right? We don't want to sort of have too much dead space. Um, but yeah, let's start with the bar and build around that. That's probably going to be the easiest. Create a polygon primitive. Let's get a cylinder. Um, and yeah, let's let's get this into position. I got to say, um, I haven't been using Maya a ton recently, and it is very, very, very refreshing to be back. Uh, everyone is <laughs> always telling me why Max is better, but uh, I keep coming back to Maya, so <laughs> I definitely have a preference, that's for sure. Uh, let's keep an eye on where this guy is relative to everything. Let's control shift A so that this always stays on top. Um, it seems to be slightly raised up from this line here. So let's start by holding V and snapping it into place here. It also seems like where it ends is right in front of the uh, edge. So let's pull that to about there. It seems to be where it is. Um, it seems to be raised up. Just a tad. I also want to note that it kind of seems like these pieces here, if I'm not mistaken, seem to be pushed forward a little bit more at a bit of a harsher angle. Uh, 
as well as these guys seem to be raised up a little bit more. Seems to be a bit more like that um, from what I can tell. Um, oh, my bad. I had this selected. Raise this up a little bit. Yeah, kind of like that. Cool. So let's snap this here. How far away is it along the z-axis? Um, doesn't seem to be too forward. Position roughly feels like... Ooh. <laughs> it roughly feels like here. Um... Maybe out a little bit further. Just seems to be up a little bit, forward, and squished in. Okay, so we can work off of this. I might even extrude it out a little bit more. Um, and now essentially we just sort of have to attach it in here. I'm gonna be modeling this piece. I'll keep it in the corner for now just so we're on the same page. Um, we've been making similar pieces to this one the entire time. Um, so it shouldn't be too too challenging to sort of put this guy together. Let's start with a cube. Uh, I'm just gonna make one and mirror it over. That's probably the easiest way to go about it. Seems like, yeah, should be the same sort of situation on both sides. So mirroring should be pretty easy. I'm gonna start with this guy by um, snapping him to the center. Um, let's get the width of this right. doesn't seem to be too thick, but then of course for some kind of prop like this, I don't mind exaggerating it, exaggerating it a little bit. Um, just so that it's a bit more visible. Um, I'm going to move the pivot flush to this face and then snap it so it's directly on and let's rotate this guy 45 maybe not even um let's rotate him about 30 degrees because i kind of want this to come down and plug in but i also want it to be on an angle so that when i bevel these it rounds out sort of like that sort of mimicking the shape here Uh, we can, of course, then grab this face down here, hit Control e extrude it out. In fact, we didn't really need to do that, so I'm going to delete that edge just to save a little bit of geo. What we could have done is just select the face on the bottom, double-click our move settings, and on uh, Object, pull it up and down so it's local to the normal of that. Um, Seems to be about this far. Now I'm going to hold shift and extrude out. Uh, the reason I'm doing that, of course, is so that I have something to grab and extrude from. So I'm going to grab this face, extrude it out. I like how close it gets there. It's pretty nice. Um, do a very similar technique. Extrude this down. And now it does this sort of weird curve thing. Um, let's try something different. With this face selected, I'm gonna press D and snap my pivot here. Go to rotate and hold shift and we can extrude via rotate based on the location of that pivot, which is pretty handy and we could keep doing it. Um, if it wasn't for the fact that it's cutting into this guy. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this up quite a bit. Uh, and let's try that again. Move our pivot here. Shift, drag, shift, drag. Still cutting in. Let's just start rotating from here. So move our pivot there. E, holding shift. Okay, we seem to clear it there. And 
Nice. From there, I can extrude it in. Um, now I'm going to reset my pivot by pressing D and clicking off. And I want this to be set to world because I want this to extrude out kind of straight. Uh, change my scale back to world as well. And just kind of flatten this off a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this entirely. Interesting to note that this is also not actually welded. I want to see if the inside has any issues. I mean, the inside looks like it should be fine. So welding it should be no problem. I'm going to isolate it just so we have a bit more freedom looking at it. I think one of the faces I deleted is still deleted. Let's undo that. Okay. Let's merge vertices. Double check these guys. Okay, they seem to be merged nice. Let's go ahead and clean this up by snapping it over. Same with over here. Merge all those guys up. Um, honestly, when that's smoothed out, I think that's going to be really fine. I actually do like the angle and how it curves back to be flush with the uh, the grid at some point. I think that's looking really nice, actually. Um, one thing we're going to have to do, though, is grab these faces here and snap them so that they're flush against the wall. Um, now this guy's looking pretty chunky. I'm going to pull these in to thin it all out a little bit. Uh, and let's go ahead and do what we've been doing with everything else and find a way to sort of fasten it on with some sort of bolts. Um, I think for this one, based on the way this is, I might have one bolt in the center here and one bolt uh, angled a little bit lower. I think that could add some cool visual interest. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do the technique we've been doing the whole time where we just sort of go ahead and poke the face. Um, we can actually just grab this cylinder here. It's close, convenient. Scale it down. We're going to be using this guy as a boolean, of course. Just making sure this guy's actually um, in front of this piece so that if I cut a hole in, it, it actually makes sense for a bolt to go in there. Um, I guess in that case, I could just push it all over slightly. Let's go ahead and delete these. So that's one one thing that I've really actually come to appreciate when modeling a lot in Max is one thing that I find people in Maya don't use a whole lot is when you select a face or an edge or something and convert it to something else. So what I just did right there was I wanted to select all these vertices, but I knew if I selected all these, I'm probably going to catch one on the other side or something like that. Uh, so what I did was I selected this edge. If you hold control and right click, these are your convert options. So I have this edge loop selected to vertices to vertices. Now I have those vertices selected based on those edges. And now I can select these guys. And uh, just pull it over a little bit, just so there's a bit more wiggle room for the bolts to stick in there. Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do that poke face command. Isolate it with this cylinder. Snap that guy right to the middle. Obviously, we can scale him down quite a bit. Um, 
but just in case, let's get our x-ray view. I want to see Yeah, that makes sense for something to be bolted there. I'm going to duplicate that and move it here. And ours is definitely quite a bit chunkier than the reference. Um, but like I said, I kind of like it filling up the space a little bit more. So I'm not like complaining about that. And of course, we can always go and change it. Um, I am noticing at some point I must have gotten rid of our cylinder here. Let me undo a bunch. Where did it go? Where on earth did it go? <laughs> there it is. Okay, I guess I... I didn't duplicate it. Wow, what am I doing? Okay, uh, duplicate it over. I know exactly how to do these fixes now. Let me just quickly repeat that. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, let's get this guy back into position. And duplicate that. Let's just double check that these are in good spots. Seem pretty good to me. Um, yeah, and let's combine them and do the good old Boolean. Mesh combine. Just freeze transforms and history and everything just because. Uh, and let's go for that good old Boolean mesh. Uh, DC Boolean manager. Click, shift select click. Make sure it's on different. Uh, clean up, delete history and base objects. Yep. Cool. Uh, these X's might have been better if I deleted them before. Uh, but it's a pretty quick cleanup, and it also ensures that we don't get any funny business by it um, automatically trying and adding edges anytime it's trying to find the best option it usually isn't the best option so <laughs> I guess that worked out cool uh, you guys should know what comes next now we're gonna put some bolts in there always got some hanging around so I'm just gonna borrow this guy I changed something um, I think srgb gamma is the default this is just a color profile i've never actually bothered to do this drop down i guess this is just yeah the default um how it tints everything like unity uh i have something similar that i'll be going over when we are in um substance painter it tints the the colors to look very much like uh, unreal engine uh, i find that one very helpful uh it's cool to know that's right there I had no idea. Uh, it's not super useful for us because we're just modeling. Um, but if you're doing rendering, it might be pretty helpful. Um, nice, so that piece is bolted into place. Kind of makes me want to skinny this out a little bit. Um, and we're gonna need this rounded end cap. Um, well, first we're gonna have to punch a hole through it, that's for sure. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna select this, uh, control D duplicate this, 
and shift select that. So we have the duplication. Click. Let's uh, freeze transforms on both of these just to make it cleaner when we do the Boolean. Um, and just like we did before, new Boolean, clean up, delete history and base objects. Nice. So I can even afford to put this guy a little bit in there. And the reason I'm doing this once again is to be able to sort of to edge perimeter, get these nice bevels um, when we're actually in ZBrush. Nothing in real life is completely 90 degrees. Uh, everything sort of has some kind of bevel no matter how hard of an edge it looks like. So we need to make sure we get that in. If you're wondering why we have them here, it's because we're going to smooth them. Uh, there's nothing too smooth if we don't cut a hole in it. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did that. Let's go ahead and grab these faces here. I'm going to use our good friend, the smart duplicate face. Bring it over. Shift drag it out. Yeah. We're going to have to grab these back faces here because they are uh, inverted normals. Reverse them and we're good to go. Uh, what I'm doing here is just grabbing this and just making this button uh, looking thing by beveling it and just softening it a little bit. Uh, if we auto smooth that, should give us the same look. Yep, cool. Uh, we just gotta duplicate this guy over and that's another part done that we can check off of our list. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, for convenience, what I'm actually gonna do is uh, mesh combine these guys control duplicate so now we have a second one um, I'm gonna hit D and we're gonna move our pivot to the center so I'm just holding X so we can snap things based on the grid I'm gonna put it right in the middle uh, and then we know that this red here is associated with the x-axis so we can just sort of go to scale negative one in the x-axis I'll flip that over for us, line everything up perfectly. I'm just gonna make sure that these guys are flush, which they seem to be. And then from here, I can actually just go to mesh separate and now everything's its own piece. The only downside is that our pivots are gonna be like all over the place, but we're not adjusting any of this stuff anymore. So I really don't mind all that much. And I'm gonna push that in a little bit. Uh, and that is that piece there. So let's go ahead and cut that guy off. Cool. Uh, number 12. Number 12 is this ruler piece. Uh, this is a pretty exciting one. Um, there is quite a bit going on here. Let's see, what do we have in place so far? We have this spring piece. We have this rounded piece. Um, I need a full shot of the back. So it's in front of this rounded bar, tucked in behind these square pieces and goes up right above this spring. Uh, but forward a little bit. Okay. Um, what all of this is screaming to me is how I'm going to have to fix this. Because um, it just does not seem thick enough. So I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Because just pulling that across...
is not going to work. Let's try and get the angle the same. I feel like we have it, like the back is fine because it's flush. It's the front that needs to be sticking out more. And I do believe actually when I was making this, I said something along the lines of, we'll have to return to it at some point. So I guess it is finally that point. Um, it's only about that much thicker though. Like it's, it's not like it's that hard. I don't know why I didn't just do it to begin with. There are some of these rounder pieces which are gonna be a pain for now, but like when we smooth them, it does a decent job of knowing what it's supposed to do. Hmm. Let's fill this hole. These triangles are not very nice. Like they're not the worst things in the world. They're just not the most ideal. It's almost good. It's just these three. Maybe if I flatten, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> um, let's see, uh, two vertices. I believe one of the two, we installed these tools at the beginning. Um, if we go to regular, regularize and relax, we get this guy here. Whoa, relax too much. What if we just grab these two? I'm just selecting verts that are kind of strained and hitting relax. It's going to do a pretty good job of smoothing things out for us. Um, this is part of the ZHCG poly tools. Uh, I should have that in the notes. This is a weird one, how it's going all the way down there. Um, but yeah, we should have installed those before. If not, um, that's the name of the tools. It's all free. So, but I'm fairly confident we do go over how to install that okay I don't know if I want to relax that one that's the thing How pointy that is isn't super nice. I'm also going to add a cut here for this guy to weld onto. To soften that out a little bit. Weird that there's a vertice there. Let's go ahead and delete that. Just 
just relaxing a lot of these guys. Uh, it just seems like this face is the main issue. Um, I'm trying to think of there's a better way to connect all of this. Like one way would be to triangulate it and then from there we could relax it in but I feel like the main issue is just that we don't have enough geo down here so what if I just connected that and then just sort of did a pass on these guys relaxing them Yeah, like that's helping quite a bit. And as with everything, ZBrush is going to do the majority of the heavy lifting when it comes to smoothing this out. So I'm not too concerned. Is this just sticking out too far? I'm just going to snap this over and then pull this one in. Yeah, that is uh, much better. It's matching the thickness of this. Not so much the height. I am going to pull this down. Uh, and that's going to mean I'm going to take this push it forward a little bit um, kind of like the idea of this being in the middle um, one thing I'm noticing is we have this metal plate on top with a bolt uh, so we're gonna go have to Go ahead and make that guy. It should be pretty easy though. I'm gonna close this relax tool for now. Uh, let's go ahead and smart duplicate this face. We want it to be a separate piece. Uh, we'll extrude it. Reverse the face on the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and snap that guy down. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep moving this a little bit more forward. Um, it's a pretty simple shape altogether, and I'm also gonna cut a screw in this, and then we'll mirror the whole thing over. Um, and then we'll get to the ruler part, um, potentially in the next video, because I think I just wanna do more research. Maybe since we're doing the ruler in the next part, we can tackle something a bit easier, like um, like this guy or something just so that we can get the most bang for our buck in this part. Yep, so let's get back to it. So one thing I'm noticing with this guy is there's a little lip. So if we select these faces, we can hit Control E, get some thickness out of that, maybe uh, 0.075 will do the trick. And then we don't need these extra edges. Might as well close them off. Merge those guys. Uh, and let's get some more screws. Let's put a screw in the top first of all. I'm gonna raise it a little bit thicker. Um, so let's poke face. Uh, it does seem like it's off to the side a bit, so I'm even going to pull it out. 
Uh, one thing that's also been bothering me is this seems to be a lot flatter on a lot of these and I do like the look of that better. So what I'm gonna do is scrunch it in and then delete these edge loops. So that when I harden these, it kind of has that harder look. Um, and that's what I want to go for. So we're going to have to cut this in half and uh, mirror it over. So that's like, takes two seconds. Cut in half, pivot's already in the middle. Just hit mirror X. Apparently it didn't like that. Just freeze transformations, delete history. Now mirror X works fine. Scrunch this up. Merge vertices, delete that with the control backspace, and we are good to go. Cool. Um, let's keep this going. So we just need to put a cylinder on there. I'm going to use this little cheat tool to make that as fast as possible. 16-sided uh, should be more than enough. Just going to... Snap it on there. Seems to be pretty big. Maybe right about there. Cool. Freeze transformations, delete history. Um, Bool tool. Delete history and base objects. Can grab one of these bolts. Rotate it. I think it's <laughs> upside down. Rotate it again. Snap this guy into position. Cool. Uh, speaking of snapping though, snap these X pieces to the edge. So there's no weird geometry. We don't want anything with more than four faces. Merge that up and that part's good. We do also need a screw on the front though. Uh, it seems like we need a bunch of screws all over the place. One, two, three, four. Interesting. Um, I mean, none of those are necessarily too difficult to make. So we might as, uh, might as well go ahead and do those. Um, I'm going to make this green so I know it's a different piece. Yeah, that's one thing that I did notice actually. There's screws like all over this. So, yeah, there, 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 there. That one. Do I have this set up properly? I'm gonna keep it like this. I know that some of these go into pockets. Some of them are more set up the way that we have it though. Um, where's our reference again? Um, just changing <laughs> music. Um, let's see, the reference we were looking at was this guy. Um, okay, let's just go for it. There's no point in um, overthinking it. Duplicating the cylinder so we have something to work from. Okay, 
let's go ahead and poke face. Centered perfectly after we vertex snapped it in. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit. It seems to be a little bit on the lower end. Um, one, two, three. I am a little bit concerned with this side, seeing how the geometry is laid out. It's gonna spider web quite a bit. Uh, we have nothing to center to on this side, so I'm just sort of eyeballing it. Uh, there's a smaller one here. And then there's two larger ones. One here. one here actually these need to be a bit bigger and a bit further down like relative it needs to be more like that this needs to be more here and about here. I still want them to be too close to the edge, so I'm gonna push them over. Um, and let's see where the ones on the side were. Seems like there's lots on the side, okay. So there's one in the middle back. There's one that's level to it, uh, a little bit further up, a little bit higher, and one that's a little bit lower. And then one resting here. I could probably stick one right about there. I want to make sure it has enough space for the edges to stick out. Um, and then one thing I need to do is for these guys, since we're not necessarily going to mirror these ones over, like we can cut this piece and mirror it, but this piece I kind of want to leave the same because it has some unique parts like this. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate these guys over. It's going to be far easier to deal with this way. Um, and then we can just combine it all for one simultaneous boolean, which we are absolutely going to save before we do mesh combine, because this is uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of edges going everywhere. Things are going to blow up. Let's go ahead and save. Okay, we can go ahead and give that a shot now. Um, bool, select our body, shift select our screws, new boolean operation, clean up, delete history and base objects. Okay, interesting. So, as you can see, um, it cut a hole in it, but it's not necessarily what we're used to where it fills it in properly. That means somewhere in this mesh we have a hole. Uh, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world to go find where that hole is. So since we have this cut out already, what I'm going to do is the second best thing and select these edges. Extrude in by shift clicking and then shift right click fill hole. 
it's literally one extra step, but doing it the other way is going to take a lot of time. So let's do that here. Um, and that hole is something we're going to find pretty easily when we're doing either the retopology or the UVing. Uh, those are usually the two steps where things really start to reveal themselves. Um, we really don't have to worry about it for the high poly. ZBrush will automatically fill in anything like that for us. Um, just makes us having to do this uh, take just a little bit longer. Um, cool. Let's fill them up with some bolts. Then we'll mirror it over and then we'll probably call it a part for now. Um, I know I said I was going to get to that front spinny thing, uh, but it is getting a little bit late. And like I said, it's kind of been a lot of things to do recently, so um, I'm going to have to balance this a little bit better. Um, but the contract work has slowed down quite a bit. Uh, I'm not going to be taking on as much of that, so I'm going to be making this my top priority. I've really wanted to release a larger scale tutorial for quite a long time now. Um, some of you guys may know this, but I do have a YouTube channel where I've been posting for forever, man. I, <laughs> I think it, it uh, initially launched in 2009. Obviously, I wasn't making tutorials back then, but I've been always posting things and I've always enjoyed sharing content like that. Uh, teaching has kind of been like my favorite thing for the past couple of years. So as someone who watches a ton of tutorials, it's like, hey, I wanna make some too, uh, especially on a larger scale like this, where I know you know, people like students and, and people who wanna break into the industry uh, can really benefit from it. This information's out there, it's just hard to sort of get all in one place. So that's kinda what I've set out to do with this, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Um, if you've made it this far, and you're watching this part live, hopefully you've learned something new. Uh, I know the idea with this is to sort of watch the sped up version and then come to this part um, when you need some more specific stuff or hey, maybe you're just watching it all in real time. Uh, that's cool too. Um, but either way, I, I feel like, obviously I'm not the greatest 3D artist in the world. I have plenty to learn. Uh, but I think at the same time, I have plenty to, to share as well. Um, so I think it's kind of my responsibility to, to get that information out there. Just filling these guys up. We can duplicate these ones over to the other side relatively easily. Cool. I'm really, really excited for us to get this into ZBrush. I know it's going to take quite a bit longer, um, but it's mostly the idea of that that's making me really excited to keep pushing through this. I'm selecting these guys and Control D to duplicate. I'm going to bring them over. And the cool thing about is this is we can just rotate them all at the same time. Plug them in. And they're good to go. Nice. Um, all right, now it's just the <laughs> sort of dislocating of this, moving it over. Uh, that's kind of a bit of a challenge. Um, probably not going to be as hard as I think, though. <sighs> it's just going to be a matter of getting such an awkward selection. So... Let's just try and grab everything. Yeah, I'm just essentially trying to grab everything that um, isn't attached to the main body. And just deleting it. So 
This might be a golden opportunity to clean up this bottom piece as well. Interesting. I thought we did take care of this already. Bizarre. It's probably where our hole is, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, that's whack. Okay, now we can grab the other one and mirror it over. I am curious, though. I could have sworn we took care of that. It looks like we did on this side. We never mirrored it over. Okay, well, this is actually really good then. I'm glad we did the good side as well uh, when we were adding the bolts in. Okay, just selecting this. There's really no quick way to do it since it's all attached to one another. More or less just kind of have to grab it uh, piece by piece. I'm not totally sure what I'm supposed to be grabbing down there. So I'll grab a little bit extra. It's probably better in this case. Uh, Deselect this stuff. I'm gonna use wireframe just to make sure we don't have anything we don't need. Uh, and bust out the smart duplicate. It already puts our pivot in the middle, um, which is perfect because then we can just scale minus one, freeze everything. Uh, and let's see how we did that. Uh, okay, so we got one extra face we don't need here. What about on this side? Everything seems to connect. It just seems like we have yeah, it seems like this didn't never really cut out at any point. Um, so we might as well go ahead and do that now. Okay, we can delete those faces. Interesting, where is this face coming from? Some funky stuff going on. Let's try and bridge this over. Yeah, which just sort of gets rid of everything we were doing. Hmm. Let's unadd those cuts for now. Uh, I think the main thing is that we have this attached to this, uh, much like, if I'm not mistaken, these are the same verts, yeah. Because honestly, this piece is kind of, doesn't really matter um, as much. If I isolate that, those two should connect. Mesh combine. This will also all reveal itself in ZBrush uh, when we're trying to soften things in a certain way. Okay. Yeah, this bottom part should be fine, and if it's not, we're already aware of it. Um, so moving that over should be no issue at all. This is interesting. Why did this not...
these are some of those problems I was mentioning with Booleans where they can just get very problematic. Um, yeah. Did this one turn out okay? It did, that's weird. I just duplicated it over, did I not? It should be the exact same. Um, first we gotta figure out what exactly is going on. We'll probably just start by deleting some faces. Did not mean to delete that. Nothing back here should be deleted. Um, I'm deleting these so then I can just go bridge. Take this guy. Put him here. Um, just doing some cleanup. And then this got a little bit destroyed too. So we can just grab these edges, extrude them out. Merge, and we can use this to our advantage where we can just sort of grab an edge here, an edge here, bridge them, an edge here, an edge here, bridge, edge, edge, bridge. Just making sure this face doesn't have any problems. Uh, and then we can sort of select these gaps and fill hole, fill hole. Fill hole. We just gotta get a little bit more creative with our problem solving in some of these cases. Uh, we are still gonna have to add that bolt in though. Or maybe not, it doesn't even seem like there is any on this side. Um, for the sake of keeping it a bit different, it might actually be cool to have bolt bolts, because this one still has a mini one up here. Um, so I'm gonna keep a mini one. I'm also gonna keep this larger one um, for visual interest. Stick this guy in here. Now that actually kind of worked out to our uh, advantage. Cool. Uh, I am noticing there's screws in the back of these. I don't know if that's the same for all of them though. Let's try and get some more reference on that. This guy has a screw in the back. This guy doesn't, he was our main reference for that piece. Um, but I guess if it's common in all the other ones. Yeah, this one has a, one in all the sides. This one you can't see. Um, but I guess there's no harm in sticking one in. Oh, I forgot about this side. Something weird is going on here as well. I don't really know what happened. Uh, in the process of duplicating that over because the other one seems to be fine. It's very strange. Let's bring this one over. I'm surprised, well not necessarily surprised, it's just fascinating how many little pieces I've overlooked um, that we have to return to. My mindset going into it at the very, very beginning is a lot different than it is now. I was thinking of adding in all these booleans in ZBrush, uh, but in hindsight, it's much faster to do it in Maya. Uh, the boolean tool in ZBrush is amazing, but the problem is we'd have to set up all these cylinders that we're cutting into the mesh with, import those into ZBrush, cut with them, append those meshes. It's just, it's just the whole thing, it's really good for complex shapes, 
but we're not doing complex. We're doing many, many simple uh, Boolean operations. So I kind of changed my mind on that um, part way through. Uh, and we're more or less now sort of playing a little bit of catch up. So I'm going to duplicate this over. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this should be a perfect square. So that lines up. Nice. Let's give this a bit of a different rotation. Um, right. We're going to add a big screw in the back and then we're going to call it a video. Poke face. Can we go ahead and freeze transform delete history on this guy. Let's steal this cylinder we added in earlier. Uh, in retrospect, we could have added this earlier, um, but I guess I didn't really notice it until now. Let's make this one a little bit bigger so it's different. Maybe not that big, something like that. Okay, let's go ahead and mesh combine, freeze transform, delete history, new boolean, delete history and base object. You guys should know the drill. Let's push that in a little bit, fill hole. Now we can just borrow one of these guys. Uh, it should already be lined up horizontally. Snap these. That's very horizontal. Let's make it a little imperfect. I do see these in the back. Uh, I'm just not too worried about them. They're gonna be gone on their own later on anyways. Something like that. Nice. Uh, I think that'll do it for this part. We're getting a lot more colorful, that's for sure. Um, so with that caught up, the next two steps are gonna be the ruler and this Underwood uh, closely linked, as we can tell by this, where it's physically actually linked. Um, I kind of want to set aside a bit of time before the next one to do a bit more research on onto how all those connect. Um, we should be able to get those all done in the same part, especially considering how they're all uh, very much associated with one another. So I, I should sort of set aside a bit of extra time for that one to make sure we get them all done in the same part. Uh, it would only make sense. Then there's just these two little pieces that we can knock out and like, no time at all. 100% uh, we're getting these two done at the same time. Um, ideally, we get these two done at the same time. And then with that, we're onto the keys finally. We're onto the keys and the guts and the scary stuff. Um, and then it's really going to start coming to life. I think it's going to start coming to life once we get the piece in the back spouting out. 
Um, but like, good progress. I know we say it every time, but good progress. It's getting there. I'm excited. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this part. I'm glad to be doing more of these. Uh, it feels good to be back. And uh, yeah, my attention is back on getting this done. I feel like it was good to have a break though. It's nice and refreshing. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next part of the tutorial. Take care.